I only crave two things in my clothing, okay? Warmth and comfort. Hi there, I'm Jane and welcome to my YouTube channel as well as my messy little sewing, crafting, art maker space. It's very multifunctional. I'm collecting new interests and hyperfocuses like Pokemon, so it's a little chaotic over here. Today, I've decided to go easy on myself for once. I'm making a really basic, simple circle cloak, which is made the same way as one would make a circle skirt, and I have the perfect fabric for it. A little while ago, like a few months, I impulse bought a four yard lot of 100% wool coating in a dark espresso brown, and it was insanely cheap. I'm talking five dollars a yard for something that is usually, uh, I want to say like 20 to 30 at the very least, so that was very exciting for me, and I'm glad that I finally have something to do with it. I also spent the hot, sweaty Colorado summer, and yeah, I know it's a dry heat, but if it's 98 degrees, it's still just hot, okay? So I spent that entire time dreaming of a cozy, slightly waterproof cloak that I could bundle up in while maintaining my freedom of movement instead of being like wrapped in 17 layers of sweaters and shirts and long underwear and gloves like the Michelin Man. Yeah, just like the idea of a cloak, like a full length cloak that I could wear while I was wiping six inches of snow off my car or like scraping the windshield without like fighting the arm seams on a bunch of garments. And honestly, like Colorado was wild. On a Thursday? On a Thursday? We, we both really care about the weather and also just kind of ignore it. I don't really even wear like snow boots outside anymore usually, unless it's like really deep snow. I just throw on some wool socks over some cotton ones and just sort of pull on my pair of sneakers and uh, I've done my time with camping trips as a child and at this point I can't be bothered with doing a lot of the like proper winter clothing most of the time. Anyways, I decided on doing a half circle cloak based on just the available yardage that I had to work with, and I just sort of knew the general process, but winged it more than usual. So yeah, I did use some pattern resources, and those will be in the description, linked as always. I don't, I, I don't really have a plan beyond that, and I'll just figure it out as I go along, you know, take a break from the mental gymnastics of making a sack gown and just go for it. So. Yeah, let's just get started. The first thing I did was to measure from the back of my shoulder to a little bit above my ankles, which was 53 inches. I also loosely measured around my neck where a cloak would lie, which was 20 inches. However, the second measurement was more of a general guideline. I decided to overestimate the length a little, so I would use 55 inches for that cutting length, just in case trimming the neckline down would make the cloak too short for my taste, or if I needed to even out the hem a bit later. I laid one of my two yard pieces on the floor and made my own protractor by tying some cotton crochet thread to a safety pin. I attached the safety pin 55 inches down the selvage edge, then placed my sewing tool bucket on top of the safety pin as a weight. This would be the center point of my circle pieces. On the other side of the string, I tied a loop around some tailor stock and made sure the string's length was approximately 55 inches, and then drew a quarter slice of a circle. Looking back now, I probably could have done this a little differently and should have made the center point of my circle slice the cut corner to save the most amount of fabric as a larger scrap, but it all worked out anyways and the fabric was so affordable, it's totally fine. Then I cut out this piece and did the same process to my other two yards of wool fabric. They're a slightly different color from each other, but I think you can only notice if you're looking pretty hard. For the neckline circle, I use 3.5 inches as the circle radius, knowing I would certainly have to trim it later. I just measured from the tailor's chalk to a point on the string, marked it, and held it down with my finger as I drew that smaller circle. I took my time with setting up my seams, trying to make sure that the two pieces were as perfectly aligned as I could manage. This meant a lot of pinning and smoothing them out before I actually pinned together the seam I was going to sew. 
I sewed together the main seam at the back with a sturdy back stitch and a seam allowance of about 3 fourths of an inch because this is a heavier fabric. I used some Coates and Clark button and craft thread in a dark brown. I do not have any strong linen thread for this, which would be the most historically accurate, but I really didn't feel like going to the store or ordering something online to find something that was more historically correct. So first off, I trimmed the seam allowance down just a little bit to make it more manageable. Then I felled each side of the seam allowance down with this thinner thread using very large hem stitches. It's okay for this thread to be much less strong because most of the stress should be on the back stitch, not the felling. Because this wool fabric is fulled, aka felted, and won't unravel, I could have left it as is, but since I wasn't going to be lining the body of the cloak, having a smooth seam felt important to me. And now it was time to sew the hood. I traced the measurements from the website directly on the two layers of offcuts, pinned together and smoothed out, and then cut the two pieces out at once. You're not supposed to do this, but I'm a rebel. Then I sewed the two pieces together with more back stitching and the heavy duty thread with a 1 3rd inch seam allowance. Originally I was going to leave the hood unlined, but I thought about it for a second. If I wore this cloak anywhere with an unlined hood, it would really mess up my hair and probably make it pretty staticky. So I rifled through my stash and remembered that I had this pale pink silk dupioni remnant. I don't look great in pastels like this, but that means it would be great for a lining. I pressed the silk fabric out real quick and then cut two hood pieces with a little extra seam allowance on one side. Of course, I accidentally cut a little bit too much on the top of one, but this is a fly by the seat of my pants project, so I'm not stressing about mistakes, just adapting to my current circumstances. Then I basted the seam allowance down on the front edge of the hood lining, the straight edge. I aligned it to the wool pieces with the hood turned inside out and used a hem stitch with the black cotton thread so that any visible stitches would be invisible on the outside. For the rest of each lining piece, I just folded in the seam allowance on the silk, pinned it in place, and hemmed it down, kind of haphazardly. This was pretty fiddly, and I realized that I should have probably lined the wool pieces separately before sewing them together, or sewn the silk pieces together, and then inserted them, but oh well, the method I chose totally worked fine, it just took a little bit longer than other ways. Oh, and I left the bottom of the lining pieces unattached, leaving an extra one inch at the bottom free. Next, I held the bottom of the hood to the neckline of the cloak, and sure enough, I had to trim off an extra two and a half inches off the neckline. Surprisingly, after trimming the neckline just once, the bottom of the hood fit perfectly. So I pinned the pieces together and backstitched them in place. This seam was then pressed open and pressed upward. After this, all major construction was finished. There are a lot of solid closures used from the ancient era onwards, including cloak pins, hooks and eyes, ties made from self-fabric or ribbon, and self-fabric buttons. I didn't really want to buy a cloak pin at the moment, and I didn't have hooks and eyes big enough, I didn't think ribbon or ties would support the weight of the cloak, and so that left self-fabric buttons. The Tudor Taylor book has a great walkthrough for making self-fabric buttons, and they're quite easy. All you do is trace a circle on a piece of fabric, and then cut a square out around it. Then you do a running stitch along the circle and then use that to gather the fabric. The edges of the square are folded in and several tight stitches close the bottom of the button. The rest of the thread on the needle is used to attach the button to the garment. I made three of these buttons because I like the number three and I thought that having multiple would help distribute the weight and stress of the closure, but there's more about that in a second. From this point, I marked where the button should go and sewed them on by stitching several times in the location and then wrapping around a couple times and tying it off. And I decided to use handmade cord for the button loops because I didn't plan on an overlapped edge for buttonholes. For the cord, I dug out some leftover wool yarn and took a few minutes to make three lengths of really strong hand knotted cord. Wool is almost always a historically accurate material for most eras, especially previous to 1800 or so, and while wool tends to be a bit stretchy on its own, when made into a cord, it should be pretty strong. Having a fiber with a tiny bit of stretch should actually make it more resilient to wear, so that when stressed, it stretches a little bit instead of just snapping the fibers. Although it should be noted that this technique is better for shorter lengths of cord. 
Because you're creating a lot of friction on your fingers, especially when you use wool or another really grippy fiber, it can make your hands hurt after a while. The ones I made are five and a half inches long. If you need a cord longer than eight inches or so, I'd say you're better off learning how to do finger loop braids or getting a lucid fork. I wove in the ends of the cords and then matched up the front edges of the cloak so I could mark where the loops would go. I stitched the cord down with some back stitching and this cute little design. Of course, after trying it on, the three button setup was not working. It made the fabric bunch up around my shoulders and sit weirdly, so I took the bottom two buttons and loops off and left just one. I might add some embroidery by couching the wool yarn I use somewhere on this. I haven't really decided yet, so if I do, I'll make a separate video about it instead of making this video take super long to make. Okay. <laughs> okay, okay, this is how you put it on, all right? So you got it, and you, and you do this, and you go, I feel like a hobbit. <laughs> this is like vampire vibe somehow, even though it's not even like black wool. I feel like that would be more vampire, but I have to do this because I'm really tall. But I'm very cozy and it, it reminds me so much of those cloaks in the Lord of the Rings that the hobbits wear that they get from the elves that are like green. Yeah, this is like, it feels very similar. It's not too heavy, actually. It's it's lighter than I thought it would be. <laughs> okay, okay, I'm gonna stop messing around. I have the high ground. <laughs> all in all, I, I really do like this medieval style cloak. I, I kind of feel like a Jedi for some reason. I think because it's brown, but I'm I'm fine with that. This is, you know, if I ever wanted to be a Jedi for Halloween, this would make it very easy very easy. Later on I'm going to make another cloak but this one will be a little bit more accurate to the 18th century because I was looking up um closures just trying to find closures that would work well and like what was kind of out there in terms of historical ones. Yeah like the 18th century women's cloak is usually like bright red. They were frequently called cardinals. They were usually like no longer than knee length. Like there's variation of course. Some people had full length ones. Some people had just like shoulder capelets and they usually had like a really really big hood and it was like sewn in a specific way which I will show when I make one. Usually to protect the giant hairstyles of the time so put a lot of effort into the hair didn't want to mess it up so doing something like that after this project would be pretty easy and um, very cold weather appropriate as well although I usually don't wear bright colors so it might be more of a like garb kind of vibe instead of something that I actually wear I fully intend to wear this cloak outside to places and I know people will probably think I'm weird but I am so cozy I don't even care I do wish that I had made a larger hood for this project but Thinking about how to like deconstruct it and piece in some new pieces and make it like wider and bigger hurts my brain. <laughs> I don't know if I'll ever do it. I might not. This is like fine, but like the thing that gets me, you can see from the profile view, is just that it's very pointy and I know that that's like just how it was, especially in the medieval era, like they, they just had pointy hoods, but to me it's... I don't know if I love the silhouette. I might make it wider at some point, maybe. I feel like I always say I'm gonna alter things after I finish sewing them in a video and then like, I don't know if I'll ever get around to it, but if, if I really want to, it's there. You know, it's not going anywhere. I'll save the scraps. Maybe I look more like a Jawa and that's what's giving me the weird vibes. What happens if I... Yeah, I kind of look like a Jawa. I'm at peace with that though. In terms of next projects, I might finally finish my Elizabethan pair of bodies. The thing that's holding me back right now is the busk. It's really cold outside, but I have to sand some wood down and I have to do that outside for health reasons. You don't want to breathe in wood particles and the thought of having to go outside in the cold. I mean, maybe with the cloak, it'll be easier. <laughs> I might make some more 18th century gear that's like easier, smaller than a sack gown. The thing is, is that like, I might be taking a trip to Virginia in October this year. 
So having a nice wardrobe of 18th century stuff when I go on that trip would be really, really good. At this point, I'm probably going to need to make a couple more gowns out of more like casual materials than silk and some petticoats. I'm probably a false rump. That's been on my list for a while. And But I, I do need more accessory type things like, uh, oh, I never remember, like the sleeve flounces, like handkerchiefs, a cloak, probably some hats. I'm going to have to figure out hats. That'll be a journey that I'll, I will probably take you on. So that's kind of my overview. I'm a little chaotic right now. If you had a good time watching my process of sewing this cloak today, go ahead and give this video a like, leave a comment. I reply to basically all of them. And consider subscribing because that really helps me out. It really helps the channel out. If you want to show a little extra appreciation, there's a Ko-Fi in my description that you can buy me a coffee at and that will keep me going hopefully on track to edit the next video, maybe even maybe even have like a backlog of videos so that things are a little bit more consistent. Maybe maybe I can get a few videos ahead, you know. With enough coffee, like anything is possible. I'm still uploading new videos during the first week of the month, ideally the first weekend of the month when I emerge from the pile of fabric and yarn scraps. I nest in as a feral fiber creature long enough to at least edit some footage. And with that, have a great day. I will see you next time. Bye. I actually don't know why I kept on the hood for that whole thing. I should have definitely taken it off. Just sat around like this, but I don't know. I'm cozy. I'm very cozy.